more than just accountants. We are business advisors, taxation consultants, and strategists that specialized in setting up businesses. We understand the client and give them the very best customized advice and strategies to achieve their goals. Visit our website, dkpco.com.au or give us a call today on 03 9023 9370. Fast, proactive, personal. That's DKP and Co. Chartered Accountants. You're listening to the State of Our Football Nation on FNR. George Demekian, Josh Parrish running and manning the control centre. State of our Football Nation, another episode coming up and some special guests. We've got uh, someone who was part of that MPL Arpia Leichhardt team that did almost the unbelievable and knocked out an A-League club for the second time in their history. Uh, we're catching up with a guy who's known and followed the game for a lifetime, a guy that I know. Uh, his name is Ray Gatt, and he'll be joining us these days. He's going to talk just the Mariners. And uh, a, a lovely young lady, uh, Caitlin Torpy, uh, her middle name is Grace, and she'll be gracing uh, the studio, <laughs> uh, not the studio, but the Zoom link uh, a little bit later in the evening. But right now, um, let's let's talk uh, one of the most exciting stories uh, for the past week. I mean, aside from Sam Kerr, you know, just bossing this game this morning overseas. <laughs> um, I, I normally don't do this, but I, I stay away from Twitter. But I've got to, I've got to commend Lav Baj. Uh, she's tweeted, Sam Kerr dropping a pitch invader during a Champions League game is the most girl boss shit, pardon the expression, <laughs> I've ever seen. And I'm so here for it. Uh, the only other person who gets that excited when he sees and does am amazing things is the man who's wondering where the light's coming from. His name is Franco Parisi from Up Your Leichhardt via Zoom. Uh, welcome to State of Our Football Nation, Franco. Oh, guys, always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, very excited. I've got halos over my head. It's all happening at Arpia. We've uh, <laughs> we, we, we've done it again and we continue. And, uh, you know, with the right spirit and the right energy, uh, we will keep going. Uh, Franco, congratulations, by the way, for getting through for a second time and knocking over an A-League club. But you guys don't do anything the easy way. Uh, Josh Parrish said to me, did you see the goal? What were you thinking? <laughs> Where were you positioned? I've got to go back and see the replay. Where were you when, it went, when, it, when, he, when he had the audacity to take it on? Uh, look, a goal like that is worthy of the occasion <laughs> and, and will go down forever. Um, it doesn't really matter where I was, George. What matters is where was the goalkeeper and Tynan was the only one that was relevant to understand that. He understood it very clearly. The goalkeeper was not where he needed to be. He had the technique, he had the ability, he had the foresight, he had the vision and he executed to perfection. And it was at a timely matter because to get to the two goal lead at that time in the game was clearly the difference for us. So, um, George, Josh, nothing matters but Tynan realising the keeper was not where he needed to be. That's what matters. Did you guys go in, as you normally do, uh, convinced that you've got the the team to take on an opponent, even though they're, uh, you know, a tier of, of football above you? Yeah, look, the core group is very much the same that, that did a similar feat three years ago. Uh, the ingredients were there. Uh, the situation, the uh, position, the disadvantage of us being well out of season. And when I say well out of season, it's, it's many months that we've not played a game. It's many months that we've not been conditioned to the level that we would normally expect. Coming up against a team that's, you know, four games into the A-League, I think, now. And it, it didn't add up to be a, a suitable occasion from a physical perspective. But tactically and definitely mentally and psychologically, we were very well prepared. Um, our coach, our club did everything possible for us to know where we needed to be, why we were there and what we needed to come out with. And uh, credit to everyone involved. It's not the players on the field. It's It's been a big task on and off the field 
for a long time to create this. And on the night, it was a, a combination of all those things. And and the last few weeks, we've really had clarity on, mm. on on what we need to do and how we need to do that. And that's credit to the coaching staff. That's credit to everyone that's been involved. So, so George, we weren't in any way surprised or, or, or like after the game saying, how did we do that? We just said, we did what we wanted to do. It came through. We planned to do that. We plan to be solid, to to control the game, to not let them into our goal mouth, not, not let them into our half, and to find the goals when we needed them. So uh, I can't say we were surprised and I can't say we're stunned. We're just totally committed to what we did and we will continue. You touched on that big squad that you've had for a while. They're, they're all... Um, big game players. You, the last time you and I and Josh were together, we, we had an RPO Leichhardt program and we were talking about you guys getting ready for yet another grand final. And I remember the, 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 how studious you were. I remember how committed you guys were. Mm. And the one thing you said, we know what we have to do. We have a bunch of players who understand the, 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 the requirement that we've got to be compact. And when the moment is there, we've got to take advantage of it. And it seems to me that nothing much has shifted in the last two or three years, which is enormous congratulations. Uh, and Josh is still beaming. I mean, it, you saw that goal and you said to me, these guys might have another couple of upsets still to go. Well, I mean, it's one of those immortal moments. I mean, you think back to Liam Boland as well, it's oh. a similar effort uh, with the goalkeeper off the line. I mean, tell me, has Tynan tried that kind of thing in training before? Have you ever seen him pull that off in a in another session, or is this something he saved up for the big night? Oh, Tynan's definitely got it in his locker, so um, it, it wasn't really a surprise that he could achieve it. But mm. it's it was a pleasure to see it in that moment because it was so timely. It was so impressive from the standpoint that he assessed what the position of the field was. He assessed where the goalkeeper was. So, uh, yes, he's, he's got in his locker. He's definitely capable. We've seen it before, but not at this level, not on this occasion, not in that moment. It is definitely credit to to the whole situation that it came through. So uh, it was no surprise he could do it, but, but geez, he would never script it that perfectly. Uh, you talk about a dagger. Did you sense that they, the opposition... Uh, Western Sydney Wanderers really hurt when they when they cop that goal. Oh, you could you could definitely see that it was a moment of these guys are the real deal. We 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 in for a fight here. We're not just going to come out second half, grab an equaliser, and run away with the game. And that's quite common when an MPL team against an A League team gets a leg up. You may get a goal up, but uh, you know by the time the A League team equalises. And then they come and they roll you and they get two, three. And, and, and that's that's something we've seen in the FA, FFA Cup many, many times. That An NPL team may, may get an amazing start, a cracking start. Uh, last week, Wollongong got a, got a penalty and a red card. And you think, this could be on. Let's go Wollongong. And, you know, we're all fighting for the underdog, the NPL story. But uh, credit to their opponent on night. They, they rolled up. They got the equaliser. And then they continued with the job. So the second goal for us, not only for us in confidence, but definitely what you just said, George, for them, it was kind of like, okay, this is deeper than what we wanted to be in. This is an arm wrestle that we, we kind of don't have our biceps quite prepared for. Uh, here we go. And and look, to be honest, until they got their, their goal, which made it 2-1, it didn't seem as though they had the belief to come back into it. So after the goal, they did. And and that was a tough, tough period in the match for us. We, we had a five, ten-minute period there where it was really hard going. And the boys, that for me was the character of the squad. That for me was the character of the club. That for me was the character of an NPL side showing we actually have mental toughness about us. Mm. If you don't think that we're physically or technically up to the level of an A-League, you could never fault the mental toughness of an NPL side, of an RPA side, of this core group that we have. You could never fault that. Mm. You're prepared to bend but not break. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Did, were you uh, at Belmore to see yeah. uh, Olympic play uh, Sydney? No, we, we had our own practice that night. We had our own game that we were preparing for uh, to play in Canberra. So uh, we didn't see the game. I remember getting home after the game and saw Seeing the last highlights. 10 minutes. 10 minutes of it but yeah. and then the highlights of course but we we were we were too focused on on mm. what was going to be the round of 32 before that and then obviously what what was come to be the the win the other night. So it was an interesting preparation for this game because uh, you mentioned the game in Canberra that was delayed and then 
uh, you ended up going the full distance to, to extra time before finally overcoming uh, the Tigers in Canberra and there was was there a couple of red cards in that game? It was, seemed a bit crazy when you see the uh, <laughs> see the score sheet from that one. Yeah, look, that was meant to be played on the seventh of November, and we ended up playing the seventh of December. So, um, <laughs> who knows what that's all about? There was a bit of a, a a few different reasons, but for us, when we got there on the night, we were totally committed to the cause as always, and we just couldn't couldn't find the goal. They did well. They they defended well. Their goalkeeper had some beautiful moments mm. and and obviously once we got that first goal it, it kind of opened up and we, we ended up with three before the final final whistle of extra time but uh, I did read a comment on Twitter the next day that at some point there was only 18 men on the field what had happened was they had received two red cards we had received two injuries that we couldn't replace with Ouch. and it was actually 9v9 them because of ill discipline and us because uh you know, the, the non-playing a game in six months had got to us. I've got to say, um, when you when you see a game like this and, the, and a goalkeeper, for example, has a blinder, and we've seen it at inter- international level. In fact, we saw it even this morning in the, um, in the Champions League game uh, between Juventus and Chelsea, the women's. And, yeah. uh, and everyone ran to the Juventus keeper at the end of the game because she had, without a doubt, Eight outstanding saves. Eight. Not one, two or three. Eight. If she wasn't there, uh, Chelsea win in a, ca- in, in a, in a canter. And, and it just goes to show you that our game, unlike so many other games in the world, you can overpower. You can overrun. But if you can't put the ball in the back of the net, there's always a chance. And it seems to me that... That's been the Arpia Leichhardt mentality. And even from your, those days when you played at Bank West, which is now was a Combank Stadium, um, you said to me that was, you know, you guys are going to open or christen the stadium with your grand final appearance. You guys have, have had that mental toughness from the very beginning. That squad um, was, can I say, built to win? Yeah, and no, I love that you recognise that because we, we have been at this for years. We've, we've developed a winning mentality, a culture of uh, work for your mate, a culture of we, we're here for each other, we want to win games, we want to win titles, we want to be successful, uh, we want to be recognised for the effort and the ability that we have. And it doesn't come easy. You don't just walk on the field. It, it is a lot of planning, a lot of organising. And uh, look, under under Daniel Cummings at the moment, we're very clear on what the job is. We're very clear on the expectations of him personally, of each other as players and of the club collectively. So, uh, George, like any good business, like any good operation, if you're clear on your objectives, you're clear on where you want to go, you've got the ability, you've got the know-how, you've got the right skill sets, uh, it comes together more often than not. It really does. Well, let's look ahead to the next round then. Quarter final home match against the Central Coast Mariners. I mean, after beating Western Sydney, anything can happen, right? Yeah, look, it's a massive task ahead of us and, and we will approach it for how it needs to be and that's something we're working on at the moment. Uh, obviously, we, we've enjoyed the last couple of days. As you can see, we're all back to work the next day. We we weren't celebrating. We weren't, we, we've yet to achieve what we need to and, and that's to keep winning. So uh, we, we're going to work through what it means to take on Mariners and, and maybe a different approach. It may be a similar one. But that's, uh, that's for us to work on in the background and and come to Leichhardt Oval on, uh, I think it's now been announced, the 21st of December, a Tuesday night at our famous Leichhardt Oval. So we've got a bit of work to do. We're going to prepare accordingly. We, we're meeting together again tomorrow night. We'll be working over the weekend. We'll be working next week. We'll be working over the next weekend. And we'll do everything right to be ready on that night. And uh, um, it's not going to be easy. It's a really, really tough task. And we don't look at, oh, we've beaten the Wanderers. We'll be right. It's it's gone. We reset the task. We reset the approach. We have achieved nothing. We move forward to the next game. That That's what really allows us to focus on what needs to happen. No one's going to remember the, the, the games before on that night. No one's going to say, hang on, guys, you won really well last game. We're going to give you some credit on this game. Mm. It means nothing. And the next morning after that game is what we're going to remember. And, and we want to be having similar conversations as we are right now. Uh, the RPL like our talisman, Franco Parisi, talking to us and giving us a sense of 
Uh, what they've been building at Apia Leichhardt for an awful long time, and it's held them in good stead, especially against an A-League opponent. Now, who's the one tasked with the, writing the, the Christmas, um, uh, I suppose, present list to Santa? Because you're playing on the 21st. Can he give you an early Christmas present? <laughs> or is this unfair? Yeah, no, it's... Um, if all of us could write the letters and get that early present, we would. Well, you've all been very good uh, this year, Franco. So uh, I hope you're on the nice list. Uh, look, it's going to be a fantastic game. That's one's coming up in a few weeks' time on the 21st of December at Leichhardt Oval. And uh, I think the people uh, need to get around you guys because, you know, we hadn't had any cup sets this season until you finally brought down an A-League team and the magic of the cup returned. So uh, keeping it alive, Franco Parisi, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll catch up with you uh, maybe after the Mariners game. I really hope so, but thank you so much, guys. Always fun and, and love your insights to the beautiful game that we all love. Regards to the whole squad and all the best for you, mate. Thank you. Will do. Franco Parisi joining us on State of Our Football Nation, talking about uh, a competition that has been, been embraced by the whole country. And we've seen the lower T clubs um, put their hand up, um, test themselves or want to test themselves. Yeah. We've seen South Melbourne do it. We've seen uh, Bentley Greens do it. We've, we've seen Arpia do it a couple of times. It won't be easy. Um, the Mariners, uh, you know, went and had a terrific campaign last year. Yes, admittedly, it's a brand new season. Uh, new coach, uh, new set of players. What do you make of it? What are the chances? You know, is it 50-50? Is it 70-30? Is it 60-40? What? I mean, and we heard from mm. Franco talking about how difficult it was to replicate the, the competitive component. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's been so difficult for them for, with that long, long off-season to, to keep up the intensity. But yeah. they obviously have a good game-by-game -game approach, which keeps them grounded. And I, I, I like the... Uh, I like their chances. I mean, I, I guess our next guest will uh, be a little bit more, bit more sceptical of their credentials given yeah. they're playing against the Mariners. But, yeah. but first, yeah. George, it's it's the quarterfinal next week between Avondale and, and Wellington, which is our next chance for a potential upset. And uh, with Avondale fresh off a, off a Doherty Cup final win, they'll... What did you make of their performance? That was a terrific contest. Yeah, it was... On a, a pitch that was a little bit uh, up and a down. little bit up and down, there were a few bare patches. So I don't think the game was quite uh, as uh, graceful in the middle of the park as yep. you might have hoped. But yep. on the flanks, certainly most of the damage was done. Avondale lost Yusuf Ahmed to an injury early, so they lost a player who could beat so people one-on-one. So where's the game one. being played now? Uh, so this game, uh, Avondale-Wellington, will be at Northcote. So, okay. um, good pitch. Sorry, not Northcote. Uh, no? I should say uh, ABD Stadium. My, ABD, my again. Uh, Getting the two Johns, Ilhan and Kane <laughs> mixed up. There we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, that'll pitch. be at ABD Stadium. So good pitch. I yep. think it'll give them more of a chance to play their football. The question I have is whether Liam Boland, after a red card in the final oh. of the Doherty Cup, is suspended for the FFA Cup. I have no idea what a good whether question. that's... I would we have we thought, raised it on the broadcast I, and me I and Joey had no well, clue. I would have thought because of the jurisdiction, mm. he can play. That's yeah, my perhaps, that's my uh, initial feeling. Someone who might get his head around this, because he's <laughs> been he's been in this caper for an awful long time. Uh, I, he's doing this for us as a favour. I said to him, "Gaddy, you've got to come and just talk to us about the Mariners." He said, "Listen, keep me in the shadows." And he, and like this in Zoom, he doesn't use lights anymore. This man, no spotlight on him. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Gatt, you're a gentleman, mate. Uh, welcome to FNR, State of Our Football Nation. Uh, Josh Parrish, you know me. Uh, mate, welcome. Thanks, George. I do know you very well. We've known each other for a long time, so ha happy to actually be on, be on the show again with you. It's been a long time. It has been way too long, and the timing is perfect because we're just talking to Franco Parisi. Up you like that, <coughs> who are, have been on this giant killer, uh, you know, quest for a while. They play you guys next. You, they play the Central Coast Mariners, and you've just uh, joined out of the out of. Um, uh, you can't control yourself when it comes to you know doing things for the Mariners. You, you know you do this for the love of the game. You've you've also done it for the love of the club. Um, you're writing that. You're now part of the Keep Up team, aren't you? Yeah, yes, George. Um, Sean Millicamp, the uh, CEO of the Mariners, rang me the other day and asked me if I would uh, be involved as an ambassador for <laughs> the club in terms of their Keep Up app and do some uh, writing, writing for the app and uh, trying to get the uh, Mariners message out there. And I was only too happy to. I think, look, they've got a very small budget. And um, when he said, when he mentioned budget, I said, 
Sean, don't worry. I'm <laughs> I'm happy to do this just for the just for the love of the club, uh, and it'll keep my hand in a little bit as well. So it, it'll keep me out of trouble. What is it? What do you make of it? Uh, you know, there have been a few changes: new coach, uh, some young players coming in, uh, but they haven't started too badly. I saw some some terrific uh, co- competition for places in the opening uh, few rounds. What have you made of uh, this new season of the Mariners? Oh, George, I haven't been too disappointed. I- Look, I would would have loved another win or two, but um, you know, three points out of the first three three games. Uh, two of those games are very unlucky. They could have, they should have um, come away with with uh, another win. I think, uh, especially against uh, Macarthur, they they dominated that game. So, look, I, I'm not too disappointed with their start. I was talking to Nick Montgomery yesterday, and he he's mm. he's fairly happy with the way the team's progressing. And look, I think they'll improve as the season go, goes along. Um, they've got a couple of players to come back, hopefully. Nikolai Muller, who played with the Wanderers last season, decent player. And of course, Matty Simon is the heart and soul of, of the team and the club. Um, you know, he's carrying a bit of an injury. Hopefully he'll be back in the next couple of weeks. But you know, if we get those two guys back, I think the, the Mariners will be looking very, very good. What is it about the Mariners, Gaddy? They always seem to unearth these sort of local gems that have this kind of fighting spirit about them and are pretty nonplus by the occasion. I mean, Jacob Farrell's the latest one, but, oh, yeah. you know, Josh Nisbet now pretty nailed on member of the side, followed a similar trajectory. Uh, they, they seem to pull these youngsters out of nowhere. And don't forget Harry uh, McCarthy, Josh, who scored the winning mm. goal against the Wolves in the FFA Cup. Yeah, look, they've got a great production line of, of young players coming through. Uh, just, it's a really long list. And uh, so I was at a function yesterday and I was looking at the squad and they're, they're so young, so, so many young, talented players. And, you know, full credit to the Mariners. They're, they're putting their weight behind behind the youth of the Central Coast. And it's paying off, which we saw with Alu um, uh, Cole last season. I mean, he's not yeah. a uh, Mariners product, but they gave they brought him in, they gave him a chance. And, um, you know, Nick Montgomery is going to do the same this season, as, as you've seen. He's, he's butted a few young players. And, uh, you know, they've all bought into the Mariners' philosophy. You know, they won't back down. The club's not going to back down. And, um, you know, good on them. I think it's a great move. That's a sign of the future. We're talking to Ray Gatt, a long-time football writer, uh, right across the uh, the football space in this country. These days, really locking his his focus around the Central Coast Mariners. What have you made of the the young squad? And the thing that fascinates me is we have between Newcastle and the Central Coast a terrific nursery. I mean, it's it's been for years capable of finding as as josh alluded to earlier you know these 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 beautiful little gems but there's more than that they they actually love their football up there and you see it you get you get a sense of it oh you do for sure and you know especially when they play at home too the local crowd get behind them look the mariners are a a family club you probably haven't Mm. seen too much of it george and josh you go to their games very very young families you know five six seven year old kids uh, with, with their mothers and fathers and the grandparents, and I think that that sort of goes on to the to the young players as well. They buy buy into that and they buy into the philosophy of the club. And you know, as I say, the management of the club as well. That they, they, they just want to push that narrative all the time that we are a young region, we're a young club, we love the young families, and you know, we're one happy family community. And I think that's what what a lot of the younger players, especially, like to buy into. Tell us about Nick Mon- Montgomery and what he brings as, as head coach and as a person as well. Josh, Nick's been there for a, for a long time, obviously, as a, as a player, and he's been in the coaching ranks and he's uh, been involved with the academy, so he knows all the young players. He's, um, he's your hardened professional, English professional. You know, he had a terrific career in, in England. I think it was Sheffield United, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and... You know, he, he brings a lot of experience and a lot of passion to the club. He, he's, he's just about a Mariners legend, you know, in all honesty, and he just loves the club, and you can see it in his worth ethic and, and, and what he does. And um, I think that, that experience and that level of calmness and determination and, and passion, you, you can see that. And, um, you know, I, I think that's a big part of uh, Nick's, Nick's philosophy. Plus, he's a, he's a good tactician too, and he, he knows his football. He knows it back to front. 
Now, you're someone who, who's known your football for an awful long time and you've also been brave enough on a, a couple of occasions to stand up for what you believe in. What have you made of this new television deal? Do you think it can be a game changer if they continue to make the improvements? And like Optus, we, we see that there have been a couple of glitches, a couple of gremlins, and, um, and, and, and it's about shifting, you know, the, the, so, the so-called um, platforms... Uh, from not so much terrestrial but to streaming. But, there, but each week we've got a special game on a Saturday. What, what have you made of this new deal? And it's still, of course, uh, betting in. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned it, Joe. I think it's a, uh, it's a game changer. I, I, I love it. Look, obviously, as you pointed out, there are some issues with, with the streaming. And if we remember Optus, oh. when they first came, became involved, a lot, lot of hoo-ha and a lot of drama there. But Optus have got it right. And I think... Paramount will get a right eventually. And I think the big issue here, the big point here is we've got free-to-air television, Channel 10, and the best part is that Channel 10 have bought in to the A-League. They've bought in to Australian football. You, you see with the, the ads and, uh, you know, the, the getting involved with Archie Thompson in uh, Ma- MasterChef and uh, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, and, and the project, and getting interviews with the players, and it's fantastic to see. And um, I think fantastic. Look, let's not forget Fox did a great job for the sport. Yeah, they did. yeah for a lot of years, you've got to give them credit. Oh, yeah. Sadly, in the last last couple of seasons they they fell away and you know that they, they, they'd had enough so we needed a change and this is a perfect change for us you know it was an interesting comment that you just said uh, that they 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 they'd uh, uh, they'd given it a fair crack it, it seems to me that they lost the EPL remember they lost the EPL rights yep. to Optus and it almost seemed to coincide with oh dear and that seemed to be the forerunner or the, the, the catalyst for them to then say we're, we're getting out of the game. Mm. But the thing with 10 and the thing with CBS Viacom uh, is you're so right. They're actually doing something for the game and this is something we must never forget. No network, even SBS, never offered up all this cross-the-schedule um, talk about the game before. It's yeah. all, this is all brand new. George, you and I both remember Channel 7 and oh, the way oh, they handled oh. the, the, the old NSL. I mean, they, they put it midnight, you know, with the, after the horror movies or whatever it was. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. full credit to Channel 10. They're, they're throwing everything behind it and, and it's great to see. And as I said, I think it's a game changer. It's fantastic for the, for the sport and long may it live. Uh, what do you make of the FFA Cup? You guys have got a, an important game against a giant killer. Happy yeah, Light Cup, 21st love- December. We all love the the FFA Cup, don't we, George? It's, it's really the grassroots of football, and you know it's fantastic to see midweek football as, as well. Um, yeah, I hope you like it. Interesting. I just had a message from Tony Rossetti. He wants to have a chat with me. So, so I don't know what that's all about, but um, yeah, look, I hope you're fantastic. You know, one of the great clubs of um, Australian football. Steeped in history, and yep. um, yeah, it's great to see them go so far. They've been giant killers for the last couple of seasons, but yeah, with my Mariners hat on, I hope that that ends very soon next week. <laughs> you know, to be honest, you, you are right because they've they've had a gallery of superstars play for Arpia <laughs> over the years, and if we wanted to notch off a top a top twenty five, we could do it, and they'd be some of the biggest names in this country, uh, starting from Rally Rasic. Catholis and a host of others, Stan uh, Ackley, and, and uh, super names that yep. for for the, some of the younger younger uh, fans would be who are they? But they were superstars of the game when the game was really tough, and you had to stand up, and uh, to make your presence felt, you had to be bold, you had to be brave, and you had to be committed. Exactly, George, and that's what they're showing in the FFA Cup. And you, you made a great point there. I mean, if you you could probably name. Three up your like card teams from the past that would would probably blitz the the A League now if they were if they were around. So yeah, yeah a fantastic club, stooped in tradition, and actually can't wait wait to see that game because it'll be a big crowd and it, it'll be fantastic. I wanted to return to a name you mentioned earlier, which is the Quoll family, <laughs> and yeah. I, I read here in the Shepherd and News that. Uh, Mariners have dipped into the well again. I knew Garang had, had joined the youth ranks, uh, one of Alu's younger brothers, and they've poached Teng from Melbourne Victory as well. So uh production line of quals might be coming through the Mariners' uh, youth sides before we know it. Yeah, Josh, I know there's big raps on, on both of them. Um, 
I believe that uh, that well-known agent and good guy John Grimaud is <laughs> acting acting for the acting for the family. So you know they're, they're in very very good hands and they're at a good club too. And I'm sure yeah they'll make great progression. And I'm sure at one stage, some stage, we'll see them in the in the first grade. Well, Gaddy, it's a pleasure to chat to you. It's a pleasure to have you back involved in Australian football. You never really left, but. Nah. Uh, Keep up Mariners no, you ambassador. Never leave. Yeah, you never leave, Josh, do you? It's like like the old footballers, you know, they retire and then they smell the liniment and they want to get it back get back out onto the field. But uh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Hotel California. You never yeah, leave. Yeah. <laughs> never leave. Thank yeah. you, Gaddy. Thanks, George. Thanks, Josh. All the very best. It. There you go. Ray Jack giving us a sense of what's uh, happening behind the scenes at the Mariners and what uh, he's seeing and he's enjoying his uh, return to the fold, as they say. He's never left. Mm. But we'll take a break. Uh, this is State of Our Football Nation. Uh, George Danikian and Josh Parrish manning the controls and tells me we have a couple of commitments we need to make and we'll do it right now. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise and we are ready to partner with you. You're listening to the State of Our Football Nation on FNR. about the things that matter that are making an impact on the game in this country and uh, of course the A-League season is up and about. The A-League women's uh, has started and before you can even take a breath there's a Melbourne derby coming up this weekend. So we thought let's not go to someone like Rebecca Stott because she's seasoned operative. Let's go to a newbie. Mm. And what have we done? We found ourselves Caitlin Grace Torpy. Welcome to FNR. Thank you very much. An absolute rookie here. <laughs> <laughs> what have they what have they told you about Melbourne Derbies and uh, any added pressure f- because it's the first one? Oh, of course. There's always added pressure with the first one of everything, but I'm super excited. Everyone is just it's just a new level of pumped, I think, for a derby. Well, that's the vibes I've been getting is everyone's just super excited and it's just going to be a very intense game. Both teams are going to be in it to win it. So, yeah, I'm so excited. Well, tell us about uh, your football upbringing. Uh, are you from Queensland? Yeah, I'm from Queensland. So I played in the raw youth system for a few years and then I became a professional footballer with the Brisbane Royal Football Club. Um, when I was 16. So I've been playing there ever since. It's my first season at City, which I'm very excited about. But, yeah. What are you making of the new facilities? Oh, it's amazing. Um, It's obviously, you know, it's a bit new for everyone. So everyone's trying to get used to a few things here and there. But you can see the potential in the next Mm. few years for it to be world class. So, yeah, right now it's, it's pretty good, yeah. And you're a right back? Yeah, playing wing back at the moment. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so, so you said at the moment, is that your favourite position, or is it you're just filling in and and uh, making sure that the uh, you're following the instructions of the coach? <laughs> no, right now it's definitely my favourite position. I think there's a bit of opportunity there with the Matildas playing the same formation. So, um, I, I'm really excited, and it's been really good to learn that new position and it's definitely a more attacking position than a general fullback so I'm actually really enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. Well you don't mind getting forward I mean I've scoured the MPL highlights and uh, it seems like you play a little bit further forward uh, when you're in the MPL Queensland popping up with last minute winners for Capalaba. <laughs> yeah I love scoring goals so in the NPL, I think um 
being more competitive is up top and to be able to practice my finishing and scoring goals. So, and the getting the attacking mindset that I need in the off season, I feel like playing up top is where I want to be and everyone loves scoring. So it's a bit of fun. Isn't it interesting? They, they do love scoring. Uh, with that in mind, with that in mind and understanding that we've got a Women's World Cup inside a couple of years, um, what have you made of the Matildas, the uh, games against Brazil and, of course, the recent uh, uh, competition games against the Americans? Yeah, I think it's very exciting. And to see Tony bringing in so many new young players, I think it's mm. such a good opportunity now and it's perfect timing to build for that, like you said, for that 2023 World Cup. So I think they're looking really good. Obviously, there's a lot of room for improvement and you can see that in their game, but... I think they are looking amazing and it's very exciting for young players like all of us here. So, yeah, it's good uh, to see. Has Stoddy taken you under her wing and kept you kept you uh, aware of the responsibilities of being a city woman? <laughs> I think Stoddy's taken everyone under her wing. She is she's a funny woman. I love her. And what a what a fantastic uh, spirit she's had and continues to have. She's a fighter from day 1 when she put this exactly. city shirt on. She's just been a winner. Oh, exactly. And that's the people you want to be surrounded with. So I think we're all lucky to be surrounded by study and play with her. Like, it's it's a dream. Yeah, give us a sense of um, uh, some of the players that we should look out for if we're, if we're new to the A-League women's. Who are the yeah. sort of uh, players that uh, we should be paying attention to? I notice we've got a New Zealand striker and she's mm -hmm. managed to do what uh, in, uh, strikers uh, are paid to do, and that is score goals, and she got the winner last week. So um, what have you made of it, and um, how exciting is it to play in that squad and have that sort of talent to, to, to get a pass to and open up uh, a defence? I think you've just done Holly McNamara out of her winning goal, George, there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a spectacular one, to too. Say. The two, two blondies, uh, uh, easy to get them mixed up. But uh, she's got some presence up front, doesn't she, Hannah? Oh, yeah, both of them are quality players. Um, obviously, Holly did score the winner and it was a it was an amazing goal, um, a great finish. And she is a young one that is ready to go, ready to score. She's ready to get her name out there. But Hannah Wilkinson, yeah, she is like she's world class. So she's another level. And I'm really excited to see like she can finish. You've, you've seen it at training. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what she can bring to the City team this season. I mean, Stoddy stepping into midfield is an interesting development as well. I mean, I mean everyone goes on about her character and mm. her attitude and her comeback and, and so forth, but it's a new role for her as well. And I was quite impressed with some of the passes she was playing in that position against Canberra. Oh, yeah, you can see she can play anywhere. Like, she is an amazing centre-back and that's what she's always played. So she's already got the defensive down pat, but then she just knows everything. So putting her up for more forward, so in the midfield, there's just more opportunity for her to link up with our strikers. And we need that. So we need, obviously, like we said, we've got Holly and Hannah up there. So you need to get ball players to play them in for them to score goals. So study, just putting her more forward is just going to create more opportunities. Well, they tell you uh, if you go to do, go to journalism school not to do your research on Wikipedia, but I, I've done just that. I've got some uh, information of questionable providence, but it says on your Wikipedia entry, Caitlin, that you played hockey until you were 14 before switching codes. Is that true? Before they took the stick away, you mean? That is, that is actually true, yeah. I did play hockey for two years when I was younger, and then I basically was every single weekend playing soccer in the park, so I was... I was confused while I was still playing hockey and then I made the change, but I, I actually really enjoyed hockey. It's quite similar, I find, in a way. That's just soccer with sticks, right? That's it's correct. That's pretty, correct. Exactly. And what position exactly. did you play in hockey? Oh, gosh, I can't remember. It was so young. So, you know, when you just play everywhere when you're young, can't remember. Just it, nearest the ball, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just giggle moving for the ball. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Uh, tell me, what's it like, uh, the, the, the move from Queensland to to Victoria and of course during this pandemic which has really complicated things how have you found it and uh, has the club provided you with the sort of support that every player needs yeah this club is honestly amazing um but the the move here in general was it was tough moving from um, like where I've been for six seasons five seasons in in raw it was tough moving from my hometown but the change is I think exactly what I needed and it's super exciting the club 
here is amazing. Um, obviously it's hard with COVID not being able to go home and fly home whenever I want, but you're surrounded by such an amazing support group here that it almost doesn't matter. So I think, yeah, this move is exactly what I needed. So I'm really excited for the rest of the season. And it doesn't hurt having a few Queenslanders to uh, soften the the transition as well in the squad? No, I know. Everyone just, they all just followed me, I think. No, <laughs> it's kidding. it's um, the no. accent. It's the accent. <laughs> they, they've got it sorted. Uh, tell me, you haven't played at Amy Park before, have you? Um, I think I've versed City here once. Okay. Yeah, but never for City and never in a derby. So. All right. So this is yes. important. So uh, it's a big game. I mean, obviously, Victory laid down a marker with their 5-1 win against Adelaide and then <laughs> proceeded to try and tell us in the press conference that they didn't play well at all, which I, I find a little bit hard to believe. But uh, Sydney, of course, piled on the goals against Newcastle as well. So there's a, a little top yeah. three potentially emerging there. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting title race. Yeah, it will be very interesting. And I think, you know, Sydney and Victory are always going to be up there and they have amazing teams on pa- paper. So... This weekend's game especially is going to be a big one for us to make a statement in in this competition going forward. So I am really excited. And obviously, they did make a mark in the league last game with Adelaide, um, beating them 5-1. So they're going to have confidence going into the game. But I think that just pumps us up even more. So we're all really excited. It's going to be a really intense match. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Josh and I started the program today uh, talking about Sam Kerr and that shoulder charge taking out that <laughs> that fan who tre- <laughs> trespassed onto the ground. Uh, 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 what's the, your manager or coach or indeed your captain told you, should anyone run onto Amy Park <laughs> at the wrong time? Honestly, no one has the right um, instructions for that moment. But Sam Kerr, I found that hilarious. I'm not sure whether that was the right thing to do, but... You know, it was pretty funny. And I think she's now painted as a little hero out there and it's just gone positively towards her name, which is awesome. But, yeah, gonna, it was, was pretty was, funny. What, what was really amazing, uh, Caitlin, is that everybody has just jumped on board. And uh, Lockie, who's one of our producers and one of our presenters, who had a magic time last night on the green, on the green room, <laughs> uh, was telling me earlier that apparently they've grabbed uh, a lot of footage now of um, Simons, um, the the cricketer, when he uh, shoulder charged one of the fans who ran onto the pitch, and apparently they've put it alongside Sam Kerr, and they're going, rate which one you <laughs> prefer, and Sammy's <laughs> killing them. So um, I mean, know. she had to generate all the oh, momentum. I mean, Simons, he had someone running at him. He just got to stand in their way. Yeah, but right? what but fascinated <laughs> me, if you look carefully. Sam Kerr has sized up the opposition. <laughs> she's waited till he's put the camera up to take the photo and she's gone, I'm taking you out now. Yeah, she got him at his weakest point. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, who's the most likely in the city squad to uh, deal with, with a pitch John invader, charge. do you think? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to say Stoddy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> she's definitely got that attitude on her. Who's the comedian in the, in the squad? Oh, Stoddy. She's <laughs> hilarious. I don't think I've ever met anyone as funny as her. That is just amazing stuff. Look, uh, <laughs> you've got a fantastic opportunity. Um, Josh and I have spoken about special occasions. Uh, certain players react differently. I've always been a great believer with, that when the, the lights are brightest, the ones who mm-hmm. love the game, who... who uh, who understand their, their strengths and, and uh, their challenges, take it on and they actually grow. You see them. They, they actually seize the moment and they say, no, no, no I'm not going to shirk and I'm not going to hide. Mm. This is what I've been... This is why I joined to play, to play on the biggest stadiums, to play on the biggest stage against the best opposition. And this is, this is it. It's the weekend, Caitlin. Get ready. <laughs> Stop. You're pumping me up already. Yeah, no. Too early. That's good. I, I've actually got a theory on the streaker. Uh, I, I reckon. <laughs> I, I reckon Melissa Barbieri. I reckon Bubs would step oh, out of her way too. Yes. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah, that is a good call. Could. I think Stoddy and Bubs would fight for it. Because we we had um <laughs> no, one they game. Do, they they do rock scissors. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Rock, or it paper, might be a scissors. sandwich, but rock, paper, scissors. I, I, there was one game where we were in the press box for last season. It was behind closed doors at Amy Park, so there were no fans. There was nothing you could hear except for Melissa Barbieri on the sidelines screaming at everybody. Instructions. So <laughs> she's uh, she's pretty vocal out there, whether she's in goals or not. <laughs> 
Well, you've got her. You've oh, got her as a, co- a commentator. You had a co- yeah. commentator. Yeah, she she wasn't there on uh, the Doherty Cup on on Sunday, but she's going to be there for the Nike FC Cup final. Oh, we're told. So uh, looking forward. So to So are you going to you going to tell her to, to maintain a measure of cool? I, I think they just turn her mic down a little bit. <laughs> no, no, we, we, we fix it in post. You know, <laughs> that's awesome stuff. Uh, Caitlin, oh, it's it's been a joy to find out a bit more about uh, Miss Caitlin Torpy, and I love your middle name, Grace. Grace. Grace on the Park. Grace on the Park. We hope. <laughs> no, thank you guys for having me on the show. Our I really pleasure. enjoyed it. Go City and all the best for the weekend, huh? Thank you very much. How good is that? Kayla Torpy. Yep. Good yep. fun. Yeah, and, and importantly, from the sound of it, um, has left the, uh, the hockey sticks and now just has this engine that allows her to run up and down, up and down at a million miles an hour. We wish you every success. Be tremendous. Take a short break, George. Why Come not? back with a bit of news. See you, Caitlin. All the best. Since 1998, Lanco Group has been providing superior civil engineering solutions and advice to developers, local government and service authorities across Australia. Lanco Group is known for delivering sustainable, efficient solutions. By working closely with clients, Lanco Group is able to meet the complex infrastructure requirements for residential, commercial and industrial developments on time, on budget. Find out more at lancogroup.com.au. Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. We are more than engineers. We are more than project managers. We are more than surveyors. We are more than infrastructure specialists. We are more than planners. So, who are we? We are problem solvers, providing the highest quality service and results. We are a team of skilled professionals, focused on customer needs and outcomes. We are 23 years of industry experience, adhering to the highest safety standards. We are Melbourne, and we are right across Victoria. We are the Lanco Group, your business partner for engineering solutions. Lanco Group, we are more than you realise, and we are ready to partner with you. You're listening to the State of Our Football Nation on FNR. Channel 10, uh, CBS Viacom have this new app. It's part of their hub and they call Keep Up. And we've been trying to keep up. We've had an opportunity to talk to three special guests on State of Our Football Nation. We started with um, one of the the men who's been part of the Arpia Leichhardt Club and I say he's a talisman. He is. He's more than that. He's, mm. uh, he's, he's um, part of that very special inner sanctum uh, that lays down a certain example and encourages everyone to follow suit. And uh, he wore the suit for us to make it as official as possible. Um, he's a, he is a pro, even though he, he's a part-timer. He's a pro in everything else that he does. Yeah. And it looks like they've got a core of players who are similarly driven and they have this unique opportunity, and it doesn't come over. It comes once a year, yes, but the opportunity to go further into the FFA Cup, wow! See, it's huge, huge chance, yeah. especially given that we no longer have this artificial system whereby well, the MPL teams automatically have one representative make it to the semi-finals because of the zone uh, system this year. Uh, they could all be out next round, but it's Gold Coast Knights flying the flag for yep. Queensland against Melbourne Victory. Yep. Uh, we've got Arpia playing against the Mariners and now Avondale next week taking on Wellington Phoenix, having been given a free pass uh, to the, this, this round by uh, Devonport Strikers' withdrawal from the competition. Avondale have to face up after a pretty hard-fought Doherty Cup final mm. over the weekend. And the Australian Professional Leagues have added another little um, you know, gem or, 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 or trophy uh, on the end of the FFA Cup. Mm. It's not just the trophy, but the spot. Yeah, in to Asia. Go further. I mean, it would be crazy if an MPL team oh. got into the, the Champions League. Yeah, but that's... Look, it, it, we have a, a host of people in the lower tiers who have been saying, mm. just stop with the artificiality. You know, give us an opportunity to showcase our wares. Let's, let's give, give us an opportunity to... Like the young players, mm. just give us a spot, give us a chance to play, 
and we'll earn it. We'll earn yeah. it. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No. I understand that there's a time and a place, but I think the time and the place is getting awfully close. And some of the promises of the past, especially under the prior re- regimes, um, really need to be looked at. Uh, I can remember very clearly um, the words of Frank... Uh, um, um, Frank and um, Frank Lowy, or Frank, Frank Lowy, yep. yes, Frank Lowy, and uh, a number of uh, the people around him at the time, saying, uh, "You know, we've we've started off magnificently with the A League. We're going places. We're going to look at, uh, uh, you know, bringing in other clubs as well." They didn't quite go there. They got distracted, um, and um, you know, I think the time has come. There's a tremendous new opportunity. Sure. The game has unravelled a little bit further. We now have the Australian Professional Leagues. We have Football Australia. It has a responsibility now to the national teams and the national platform, but now we've got some some truly amazing opportunities. And every time you put a team on the pitch, there is a chance for a magnificent upset or cup set. Yeah, indeed. And and 2023 is looming as the potential banner year for Australian football because not only have we got the Women's World Cup, but hopefully earlier that year we'll have the National Second Division finally Uh, arise from all these years of being mooted and the can being kicked further and further Mm. down the road Mm. and COVID and so on and so forth. Uh, Finally, we we might have something for uh, the MPL clubs to aspire to join and uh, some of the old NSL clubs to uh, have some of their uh, former prestige back and see what kind of fan bases they can garner playing in a national competition. It would be tremendous. Well, it's like anything else. You give me an opportunity to bring sponsors on. Yeah. Yeah? Suddenly there's an energy that comes on as well as money and other opportunities. Um, Speaking of opportunities, what did you make of your uh, uh, Doherty Cup weekend? Oh, it was great fun, I have to say. Uh, The broadcast was a much more elaborate and... Uh, yeah, just a, a much better viewing experience than anything we've done before in MPL Victoria. How so? What what was different this time round from last time? So usually it is one camera and one or two commentators straight into the into the camera with microphones. Yep. Um, you're up on a scaffold. Direct feed. Yep. Yep. And yep. then they lay the graphics on centrally, and that's it. No pregame, no halftime, no nothing, no replays. You got to skip backwards on the stream if you want to see a replay, I suppose. Uh, this time we had a two camera operation. Uh, which was fantastic and live, graphics. live switching, good gra- uh, graphics, replays. Uh, we had a pre-game and a halftime show with myself fantastic. and Joey Lynch, which was great fun. Uh, do some on-camera stuff with the magnificent Doherty Cup in between us as it our is. as our prop. It is one of the which, most beautiful trophies. Oh, isn't it? it's, it's a stunning trophy if you haven't seen it. It's a bit like the Stanley Cup with its big wooden yeah, base and all the, the shields it's around the it. The biggest trophy in Australian uh, football, I would yeah. think. And um, someone from FE apparently spent the uh, previous weekend polishing it. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> I, mean, I heard we just took a number of hours. Okay, so so, so, so let me ask you a provocative question: uh, What are the chances of Avondale? continuing well it depends on some of their injury status after that game it was all things being equal if they get a full squad i think they're a chance i really do because they've got so much explosive talent up front so they can hit you um you know they, they usually play a very attacking style of football but i think on the weekend they showed that they can dig in and be gritty when required because it was a gritty contest there were two red cards a lot of big tackles flying in. I was particularly impressed with the performance of Yite Towns, who won the uh, Jimmy Mackay medal for player of the match. Uh, he is usually a small, skinny, creative midfield player with great dribbling ability who gets into tight spots, and he showed that, and he won the penalty, which won Avondale the game. But he also laid about five or six crunching challenges, got the ball every single time and was generally a really stubborn presence at the base of midfield. So if he can bring that grit into the game against Wellington, that's what what they're going to need. I I love the idea that adventure gets rewarded. Mm. So he went charging into the penalty box and got the penalty. So he went for it. In other words, it was was not shirking, was not playing safe, it's going for it. And that, that to me is one of the great keys you you see teams that win more often than not and they've got players not they're not just goers but they have a belief in them uh liverpool at the moment man city have it um by the way what did you make of the refereeing in the doherty cup i thought it was very good uh upon review of the liam boland red card and it 
you know, it's hard to tell. Yep. But it was one of those silly situations where two players get into an, uh, a confrontation, they go head to head, and then there's an apparent headbutt from somebody and they both drop to the ground. Got it. And it turned out that, you know, Bolin was given the red card upon very forensic analysis of the sort of Zapruder film that could was the been, replay. Could have been both. I think it was probably the other player who initiated the contact, uh, so he'll be spewing if he does the miss the game. retaliation, we don't rate. The, the, the counterpoint is don't get into that situation Correct. in the first place and Correct. don't give the referee an excuse to send you off. Uh, apart from that, I thought the game was really... It was a serious hot potato of a fixture, and I thought Adam, Adam Bavka, who's a mm. referee who's mm. been elevated into the A-League panel now, I thought did a fabulous job apart from that, which, you know, it was a tough decision because, you know, you've got to see it from exactly the right angle and sort of almost in slow-mo to work out what happened. So. Uh, let's stay with the uh, theme of referees. What did you make of the performance of Jared Gillett in the EPL? Mm. He had Spurs in their last home game. That uh, was against um, Norwich, uh, was it? Norwich. Yeah, brilliant. And um, he handed out three yellow cards early. Um, and I remember in the first yellow card that he issued, they said, why didn't you play advantage? But at the end of the game, uh, the commentators were more than complimentary in his... Uh, he seems to be growing and He's growing. Not only his reputation, but his confidence too. Well, if you can impress Neil Warnock, uh, then you've done a good job as a referee because he's not usually too too impressed by referees. No, he, he said his favourite referee in the championship was Jared Gillett. Um, and he says no wonder that he's, you know, he's done really well for himself and, and is refereeing the Premier League now. So, I mean, it's, it's astounding, his progress. You remember the footage that Fox showed of yep. him talking with the uh, linesman throughout the contest? I think that enhanced his that, reputation. Yeah. I mean, he already had the gig. Well, that was he, part he of the, the reason. Players. He doesn't run yeah. away from them and no. he gives them a sense of what's happening and he reminds them to, you know, settle down and we'll get on with this. Look, it's been a terrific uh, opportunity. We've had an hour to catch up with uh, three, um, you know, interesting people um, who've, who've, who love the game. We've, we've Caitlin Torpy, brand new young woman who's come from Queensland to play for Melbourne City, and we wish her well for her opening derby. Mm. And it won't be easy because, as no. you touched on, Melbourne Victory have added yet another star player. Come on, break the news. So Alex Chidiak has signed on ex loan. Ex-City girl, ex-Adelaide ex girl. Yes, uh, Matilda with 20-something yeah. caps. Yeah. Uh, has She's been playing overseas yep. for a while. So Jeff United Chiba is the uh, Japanese side that she's on loan from. Uh, they're on a winter break in Japan now. I, I don't think that move has really worked out as she hoped. Um, she was being played out of position as a left wing back, which isn't Chidiak's game. You know, she's a very skillful yep. uh, interior player. And to Low centre of gravity see. and loves to dart in between the lines. Absolutely. So Victory have another weapon in their ranks. Plus they've signed uh, Lynn Williams, who oh, yeah. really... Who, who did okay for the Americans. Yeah, <laughs> she did all right. And she looked awfully good, didn't she? Yeah, indeed, and she was very good for the Wanderers, I remember, as a guest player. So that's just a guest in. Um, and they have these guest stints in the in the W League quite often, or the A League women, as it is now. Mm. And uh, yeah, she's pretty devastating forward with her pace. So, uh, adding more stars to that lineup. The only bad news is they've uh, they've lost their their key centre half yes. to, to injury. injury. Yeah. So uh, that, that ACL, ACL tear yeah. is ACL. is a real sucker punch. If you haven't been to an A League women's game uh, before, uh, and you're in Victoria or you're in Melbourne. Get along to Amy Park on Sunday. It promises to be an absolute thriller. Uh, these two clubs, um, you know, don't take a sideward step. They both uh, enjoy very much the bragging rights. They both want to be the best uh, in the state. They also want to be the best in the country. So uh, an awful lot going on. And you've got to say that victory at the moment have got to be the favoured side because they've been around longer. They've, they're the current champions. Mm. So interesting times, but it'll be on for young and old. It'll be terrific. I can't wait. It's Is Bubs Bubs anywhere near the commentary team? Ah, uh, Bubs. Yeah, she, Bubs. Might, she might be playing. <laughs> oh yes, she's I hadn't in thought squad. About that. Yeah, yeah. You I, see, this I find it a bit hard where she can be a commentator and she can be a player, a potential player. It's funny uh, that they were. I'm only jealous that I can't do it. That's, <laughs> all, that's all I'm saying. They, they, it was funny. We were thinking about the Doherty, uh, sorry, the Nike FC Cup final, which is a broadcast coming up for mm. FV. Uh, and where the bubs would be available, and thinking, oh, okay, are South Melbourne going to make the final? And then remembered, oh, she's gone over to play A League Women, so I guess she won't be allowed to play mm. for South. So she's probably mm. available. Uh, but uh, she's she's dividing her time <laughs> between good. various different pursuits. But uh, yeah, she she's 
very close to, to first choice for City this season, I would imagine, in, in between the sticks. I think she'll play. She just rolls back the years and does it time amazing. and time again. It's yeah, amazing. It's, it's called commitment. And by the way, it's uh, her name is... Bubs? <laughs> yeah, no, her, 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 her full, full name. name. Melissa Barbieri, that's Thank right. Thank you very not, much. Not Hudson, but no, Barbieri. No, 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 let's, let's not be silly. Uh, she, 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 you build a profile, you build a brand, mm. and I think that's what it is. Uh, important for her, it's the one that she's so proud of. Not that she doesn't, uh, you know, wear that other, uh, you know, married name as well, but when she's playing, she is Barbieri and she is a fearsome fighter. Yeah, doesn't take a backward step. No, and I think it, she will start this weekend. I mean, she's got a couple of good goalkeepers in that squad. Maisel's, uh, Melissa Maisel's, yeah, another well. Melissa competing with her. But I think she will start. She Ooh. started against Canberra, so that's uh, okay. yet another big game for Bubs. There you go. Look, uh, I trust you've enjoyed the hour, Josh. We've had a chance to go right around the country. A Zoom to the Central Coast uh, to catch up with Ray Gatt. A Zoom to Sydney to catch up with Franco Parisi and a Zoom to, uh, to Melbourne to catch up with uh, Caitlin Torpy. Uh, until next week, this is State of Our Football Nation, George Stanikin and Josh Parrish.